Hey, good morning to everybody and good evening to those that listens on Thursday on the Facebook uh, page. And uh, getting started here this evening, I always like to tell people, uh, thank you for uh, continuing to give to support this radio program. Uh, it's the only way that we stay on uh, the air in order to do this. And uh, uh, we do thank you for doing that. And uh, I'm just sitting here thinking about... <clears throat> churches and the, the Bible, the word of God. And you know, you can turn the radio on, you can turn the television on, you can go to a different building, different churches, different names, and somehow, some way or another, and we're not throwing stones and we're not uh, condemning nobody, we're not uh, pointing fingers at nobody, but <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of different beliefs. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff out there that, that, that a person can hear. And uh, I heard a guy say this one time, and he said, no, not one time. I heard him say it quite a few times. But the more I heard it, the, the more understanding I got of it. And he said, everything rises and falls on leadership. And, you know, if you think about that, <clears throat> there's a whole lot of truth probably the only truth in that right there is that everything rises and falls on leadership. And, you know, you take a business. If a business has got a good leadership, uh, the person that owns it, uh, you know, thinks clearly, got some understanding of things, hey, he's got a great business because it's got good leadership. There have been a lot of things that started and stopped because of the leadership, didn't know how to run it, didn't know how to take care of the finances, didn't know how to hire people, didn't know how to get things done. But <clears throat> and I think it was in Isaiah, God said uh, that the leaders, the leaders has caused my people to error. And you know, folks, whether or not we want to believe it, somebody is in error. Uh, somebody is not. Uh, they either don't know the truth or they're not telling the truth. I'm going to say they just don't know the truth, whether that's me, whether that's uh, the Church of Christ, whether that's the Methodist Church, whether that's the Catholic Church, whether it's the Baptist Church and their 50-some-odd uh, denominations, whether it's, you know, whatever. Somebody with all of the interpretations and all of the doctrines that we got, somebody, as we've always said, is wrong. Can't, can't be no other way. And, and, you know, Jesus talked about leaders. He said that they're blind leaders uh, uh, of the blind. And he said, and they both fall in the ditch. And, you know, there was another place. He said, how can two walk together except they agree? And you know, the best thing we could do in agreeing with something other, it ain't agreeing with a, with a building. It ain't agreeing with a name on the building. It ain't agreeing with uh, what we hear uh, unless it lines up with what Jesus said, what Jesus taught, what Jesus did. That's, Jesus, had, Jesus was a great leader. <laughs> I mean, a great leader. And he had great leadership. He hand chose them men. He taught them men night and day for three and a half years. He turned them loose with the gospel. And, and them 12 men that he chose, really 11, Judas checked out a little early, but <clears throat> those 11 men that he chose, that the Bible said they turned the world upside down. Now, folks, that's some pretty awesome leadership, if you think about that. And, you know, I don't want to seduce or deceive or to lead people astray. I don't want to be that way, and I don't want to do it for other people. You know, and but reading this Bible that, that we try to minister to people, the Bible says that we do that uh, to the best of, of your ability or the best ability that God gives a person. And, you know, and, and I think that's what people is doing. They're pretty much doing the best that they know how to do. It's just what I'm doing. 
But y'all folks, whenever it comes to a lot of these scriptures, it's not real complicated and it's not uh, that hard to understand if we just take it for what that it says most of the time. Now, we got to do some digging from time to time. We got to, uh, uh, you know, Paul said that, that he spoke uh, uh, the mist. Uh, uh, he said, well, a lot of times he said, how was it he said it? That, that we uh, speak uh, the mysteries of, the, of this gospel uh, of God to them that are perfect, he said. That means mature and complete. So it's a mystery. So, some of this is a mystery. And you know, you have to dig in, in a mystery. You watch television and you watch some mystery shows and man, they get all kinds of information. They get all kinds of people in and, 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 uh, interview them, and then they start putting pieces together. And there is some of this we have to do that. There's no doubt about that. And then Paul said, it's the Spirit that searches the deep things of God. He said the deep things. And you know, the Lord showed me something one time uh, concerning that. And, and you know, you, you talk about, you look at these people that goes uh, to find treasures out in the in the in the wilderness, and said so they've got to go deep into the wilderness. You can't just ride by on the side of the road and pick up a treasure. It just don't work that way. And people that goes out into the ocean, uh, you may find a, a a nice shell, or you may find something another snorkeling, you know, in in little shallow water. But in order to get to the treasures, those things that's worth something or another, you've got to put some scuba gear on. <laughs> You're gonna to have to go deep. And, 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 and find those treasures. And, you know, sometimes that's what we have to do here. But most of the time, it's just, it should be easy understood. The Bible talks about the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Simple. Jesus went around telling simple stories to people about seed about farming, about stuff that they could understand and they knew something about. That's uh, the examples that he gave to them people and they could get it. Jesus didn't try to complicate things and say, well, you know, as it, and another, one thing for sure he didn't do, he didn't go into this town and, and minister to them people and tell them that this is the word of God and then went into another town and told them something another else was the word of God and then go to another town and tell them something another else. No, it stayed the same. It stayed the same uh, everywhere he went. And that gospel and the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached, folks, it's still the same. It's the same today. If Jesus come back today, what would he minister? Same exact thing as he ministered back then. Why is that? Because his words are forever settled in heaven. And of his kingdom that he ministered back then, he said there'd be no end. It's the same thing today. But so many times, uh, people somehow, somewhere or another, they might have been deceived. They might have uh, misinterpreted something or another. They might have twisted something or another around, you know, whatever. But but as far as Jesus, hey, it's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The, the gospel that Jesus preached, that's the gospel. Paul said there ain't no other gospel. This is it. This, he said, if anybody, an angel from heaven or anybody come preaching you some other gospel than that which we've received, well, he, he talked about the gospel of Christ. He said, he said, they ain't no other gospel. He said, don't listen to them. Don't pay no attention to them. Uh, there's a lot of things said about people that's trying to preach and to teach other gospels and, and uh, give different interpretations of things. They, they, a lot of stuff that was said. And with whew, with all that being said, we're going to try to get started here tonight. And John, we're back in First John, and we're going hopefully we'll finish this up tonight here. And uh, 
John chapter 4, but we thank people for giving. We just pray that, that you get something out of this. And, 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 you know, folks, I tell you this all the time. Do not take my word for it. Get in this Bible and, and, and look for yourself. And there's times here that you always hear me say that we've got to rightly divide this word. You know, we can, scriptures that I give, there's people that comes to me and they'll give another scripture that says something another else than what did I say. And I can't deny that. I don't try to. I don't try to say, no, that ain't in the Bible. No, I, I don't want to say that. No, I don't want to hear about that. But I look at that scripture and then I take the scriptures that, that I'm reading about the same subject. And folks, we got to rightly divide at some point or another. And we got to find the right meaning in what that they're saying. And, and that takes a little work from time to time. A workman rightly divided the word of truth. But in First John chapter 4, uh, we stopped last week on the verse whenever he said, I think it was in chapter or verse 6, whereby he said, Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So there's a spirit of truth that John said that this truth that it's going to be with us forever is what John said. This truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's it. What's truth? Jesus is truth. And, and you know, anytime we, we want to be sure of something or another, just follow Jesus. Stick with Jesus. Why? Because he is truth. And the spirit of truth will always teach us truth. Like we said, it won't ever teach one man one thing, another man another thing, and another thing it won't do. It won't. I've heard this many, many times from people. You know, they'll say, sometimes you read a scripture and it, and it, and you and it, you get this out of it. And then another day you'll read it and it's something other completely different. Uh-uh, it'll never be completely different. We may get more light on it, the next time we read it, or the next time we read it, or the next time we read it, more light, but it'll never mean one thing one day, uh, a different thing the next day. It, it'll never do that, because if that's the way it is, we can never be sure of anything. Never be. But he said, uh, that spirit of truth and the spirit of error, why did he say that? Well, because we we, we went up uh, last week, we started in uh, in. Uh, chapter 1, and he told them that there was a lot of false prophets, many false prophets, he said, that had went out into the world. And uh, he said, right here is how you'll know the spirit of truth. This is it. Now, this is one of them things that's not very complicated right here. He said, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, he said, that spirit is of God. So, in other words, that's the spirit of truth. It person can't error about that. He can't go wrong with that. If you believe Jesus came in the flesh and walked on this earth in the flesh, that Jesus, the Son of God, did that, and whom the Father sent, that's the right spirit. That's a correct spirit. Not that hard, not that complicated. And then he went on to say, uh, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ come in the flesh, if you don't believe that, that it was Jesus, the Son of God, on this earth, whom the Father sent, that walked on this earth, he uh, shed his blood, he hung up on the cross, he was resurrected. If you don't believe that, we've said this before, you ain't saved. You 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 must believe that or you're not saved. But if, if, we, if we don't believe that Jesus came in the flesh and the Son of God in whom the Father sent, he said... That's a spirit of error, and he said it's a spirit of antichrist. Now, a lot of people think that the antichrist is people that says, oh, we don't believe in God. We don't believe in Jesus, and, you know, we, we're pushing God away. We don't want him anymore. That ain't what John said right here. It ain't nothing about that, and however it could be about that, but that's not what John said. John said, if, you, if you're confessing that it wasn't Jesus, the son of the living God that came and walked on this earth in flesh. If you're saying that, that it wouldn't have, he said, that's a spirit of antichrist. And that's what John said. He said, he said, know ye 
the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I want to read uh, something other here in Jude, just a couple of pages over. And in Jude, in the first chapter, it's just one chapter, I think, just one chapter. Uh, uh, it says in verse 18, I'll start verse 17. But beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last time or the last days. <clears throat> Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. These be. They separate themselves. Why do they separate themselves? He said, not having the spirit. What spirit is that? Well, it's capitalized, which means the spirit of truth, which means the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost, the comforter, is the spirit of truth. And he said there, he said that these is uh, in the last days, these is going to be that way. Well, we were led, read, I'm sorry, a couple of weeks ago about uh, in the last days of uh, John said that there, uh, you've heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there's many. Why was the many Antichrist? They was confessing not that Jesus came in the flesh. They was Antichrist means anti, uh, which we've learned that Christ means the anointing. They was against the anointing that was on Jesus' life. The Bible tells us that in the book of Acts, they was against our Lord. Jesus, and they was against his, whose? Jesus's Christ. What does that mean? Well, the next verse says, of a truth of the holy child Jesus, whom thou has anointed. They was against Jesus and his Christ, his anointing that he had on him. And that's what he keeps talking about here. And that's what we've been talking about now for quite some time about this anointing that Jesus had on his life, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. God was with who? Jesus Christ, his son, in whom the father sent. He said, he that loveth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God towards us. Why? Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world. Okay, I am, I'm going to read it like this right here. Now, <clears throat> and this was manifested the love of God towards us because, now <clears throat> we're going over this because, now, don't get offended at this, just hang with me, just hang with me. And hopefully, the Holy Ghost is going to help us. He's going to teach us some things. We've done seen where if people say that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh, uh, that spirit ain't of God. But as long as you believe that Jesus came in the flesh, which I'm believing that most people that's listening, if you're born again, you believe that Jesus came. He died on the cross. Jesus was the son of God. And Jesus shed his blood. For our sins and the sins of the world, Jesus rose again. The Father sent his Son, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life, or should have everlasting life, he said. If you are if you believe all that, you're born again. And that's the end of that. That's all I know what to say. But I'm going to read this right here the way a lot of people believe. And it says, in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God became the only begotten son or God was the son of God or God uh, what, or Jesus was God in the flesh or Jesus was the God man. And, and you know, people don't misunderstand me. And like I said, folks, hey, I don't want to deceive people. I don't want to be deceived and I don't want to see, deceive other people. I don't want to seduce other people. But folks, according to what John is saying here, now we know in John, St. John, that he said, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
And then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now in the beginning, that's the way it was. It was God and it was his word. And then something happened. Then the word became flesh. Does it say, and God became flesh? No, the word became flesh. Now people, they get upset whenever you say that. But let me ask this. Why would you get upset? Why does people get upset whenever you believe that Jesus is the son of God, that God sent his son into the world, that you could be saved? You believe that Jesus, uh, the son of God, hung up on the cross? You believe that Jesus... The Son of God shed his blood for you. You believe that Jesus, the only begotten Son, was resurrected from the dead? And if you say, yeah, well then, I don't understand why people get upset whenever that you say Jesus was not God in the flesh. Jesus was the Son of God. Any man that says that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh, he said, if you if you say that he hadn't come in the flesh, if you're saying, no, that was God, what did he say? That's a spirit of error. It's a spirit of Antichrist. Thus saith the word of God. But Jesus came in the flesh. He walked on this earth. Jesus Christ became, who, that was the word. He brought the word of God to us and he dwelt on this earth in flesh, just like me and you. Flesh, bone, born of, of water and blood, as the Bible said, we'll see that here just in a little while. But, <clears throat> But he said that this uh, was manifested, the love of God towards us. Why and how? Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Who? The only begotten son. Hearing his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. And God sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He keeps saying this. Over and over and over and over. I think he's trying to tell us something. Who is Jesus? The only begotten son of the father in whom the father sent. Now, like we keep emphasizing all of that. And, and we do that because right here's, here, here's why. We, we talk about Jesus and nobody has a problem with Jesus being the son of God and him dying on the cross and him shedding his blood and, and Jesus, they, they don't have a problem with any of that. And the way we get to the father is through Jesus. There ain't no other way. There's no other name that you can be, uh, have salvation except through the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. We don't have a problem with any of that stuff. <clears throat> but when it come to, we just got off of the works that Jesus did. And he said, the works that I do, shall you do also. And the works that Jesus did uh, that got the works of the Father done on earth. And when we get to talking about all that, God's, he's pretty smart. He's, he's weaving all this in together for us. He's trying to help us on some things. <clears throat> but when we get to talking about those works, all at once this Jesus that we believed on, that was the Son of God, that God sent, and that uh, he 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 was uh, in flesh on this earth, and that he hung up on the cross, and he died for our sins, and he shed his blood. That Jesus Christ, the the, the Son of God, that came in the flesh, all at once, when it comes to the works, then he becomes. No, that was God. That was God. Jesus was God. Jesus was the God man on this earth. Jesus was God in the flesh. And folks, it can't, it cannot be both ways. You know, we said this <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, <coughs> maybe last week. We've been on this for quite a while. And I just be honest with you. I feel pretty humbled <laughs> by having to, to stay on this. The Holy Ghost just won't let me go on. Every time we've ministered on this a couple of times in, you know, quite a few years. And every time we get here, it just seems like we just, he just has us to say here. And folks, there's a reason for that. I don't do this just because I just want to have something to say. And, and I sure don't do it in order to make everybody happy <laughs> because it don't make everybody happy. And most people don't agree with it. And you know, that's okay. I tell people, don't take it up with me. <laughs> take it up with, with the Holy Ghost. Take it up with Jesus. I didn't write these scriptures. I, I ain't 
running for a popularity contest. I ain't running for a political office. So, you know, don't really matter to me. If people like it, if they don't, the Bible says, if I'm out to be a man pleaser, or if I just want to tell people what they want to hear, I ain't fit to be a servant of God. That's what the Bible says. But, you know, we tell people, we go out into the world, we witness to people, we tell people about Jesus. Well, who's Jesus? Well, he's the son of God. You don't know nothing about Jesus? No, well, Jesus, the son of God, in whom the Father sent, God sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have, but should have everlasting life. Jesus hung on the cross. Jesus paid the price for your sins. Jesus took your sins. Jesus shed his blood for your sins. Jesus died so we could have eternal life. And it's all about the Son of God. But we get them in church. <laughs> we get them people in church. And then whenever it comes to all of this other these other things that Jesus did, and people get to asking about that, then what do we do? Well, you know, Jesus, after all, he was God. Jesus was the Father. Jesus was the God-man. Jesus was, uh, you know, God in the flesh. Jesus was uh, God that had a fleshly body that had, you know, we tell them all of that stuff. After we tell them, no, no, Jesus was the Son of God. You can't be born again unless you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and like we said, then we get them in, and then we tell them something and other else. Now, folks, how confusing is that? You know, it's <clears throat> it, it's 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 like sin. We we tell people, hey. No, Jesus paid the price for your sins. God's not mad at you for your sin because Jesus bore your sins in his own body whenever he hung up on the cross. And, and you know, hey, we, we tell them all of these things. And then we get people in church, and then before you know it, if we don't watch it, well, God's judging you because of your sins. God, God's mad at you because you you keep sinning. And God, and God he's... And we tell them, you know, hey, Jesus, he, he put your sins in the sea of forgiveness. Never no more to bring them back up again. Never no more to return. But then whenever we get them in church, oh, you better watch it. God gets you because you're sinning. Folks, it don't make no sense. It's, it's almost like, it's almost like a, a little baby being born. And you know, whenever a little baby's born, it's the most innocent thing that ever was. It don't know anything bad, don't know nothing. And, and you, and you think about this and we, the world talks about racism all the time now. Racism. This one and this one, this color, that color, these people, that, color, all, all of that stuff. But you know, a baby has to be taught racism. It don't know it. It has to learn that. Somebody has to teach it that. And, you know, folks, it's the same way. We, we, we get people born again by teaching them Jesus was the son of the living God that whom the Father sent on this earth, and Jesus took their sins, and Jesus shed his blood, them, and then we get them in church, and then we teach them, now, that wasn't Jesus after all, the son of God. That was Jesus, God the son. That was Jesus. That was God in the flesh. That was Jesus. And, and folks, like we said, how confusing can that be to people? Let's go on. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be our propitiation for our sins. Doesn't read that. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Now we got in a little bit on this love thing last week and, and, and seen some things, but he kept saying we should love one another, love one another, love one another. He didn't say that you should love everybody in the world. Now, don't misunderstand me. We, we, we are, we love one another. We love God. We care about them people of the world. We care about them people. We have compassion for them people. But he kept saying that you love one another. Love one another. The, the brethren. Yeah. You know, last week he said, whenever you've done it to one of the least of these, my brethren. He didn't say whenever you've done it to everybody that's out in the world. Everybody that's lost. Everybody that's been born and, and lives in the world. No, it was to the brethren. 
And like we said, no, it ain't that we don't care about them. It ain't that we don't have compassion for them. It ain't that we don't uh, care about their soul and, and whether or not they born again or not. It, that's not it. But he kept saying that we love one another. That's in the church, folks. He said, no man has seen God at any time. This is the fourth time right here that John said this. No man has seen God <clears throat> at any time. Now, uh, <coughs> Jesus said this, The Father which has sent me, you have neither heard his voice nor seen his shape. I'll read it again. Jesus told his disciples, The Father which has sent me, who was Jesus? The Son of God, whom the Father sent. He said, you've neither heard his voice, nor have you seen his shape at any time. Uh, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten, the Son, the only begotten Son whom the Father sent, he has declared him. Who? He declared God unto us. What does that word declare mean? He made known and he made manifested. Who? God the Father. Jesus came in order to make the Father, his Father, which was God, which was in heaven, as Jesus kept saying, he made him known unto us. And we said that Jesus said, or, uh, or John said four times uh, that no man has seen God at any time. Jesus said no man has seen his shape, nor heard his voice. Jesus said only the begotten, which is of the Father, uh, or, or, yeah, which is of the Father, he has declared God unto us. Now, <clears throat> last week we hurried through this. We've got a little more time today. But I want us to go back to Timothy. And, uh, and Timothy, before I read this in chapter 6, I'm going to read a in chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressionally that in the latter days, or latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We can also go back to what we just read in Jude by saying, for they have not the Spirit. What Spirit is that? The Spirit of truth. What, what does the Spirit of truth do? It teaches us truth. It teaches us what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. This, the Holy Ghost, whenever he comes, he's going to take of mine, and that shall he speak unto you. That's what he's going to tell you. That's what the, the Holy Ghost's job is. But in chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul told Timothy, he said, I give thee charge in the sight of God, who shall quicken all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Jesus witnessed a good confession before Pontius Pilate. He said that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is that? The Son of God. He's coming back. And whenever he comes back, the Son of God, we're going to be able to see where they uh, pierced his side. We're going to be able to see the nail prints in his hands where they drove the spikes in his hands. We're going to be able to see Jesus, the Son of God, uh, 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 whom the Father sent. This this man from Nazareth, that the one that was the seed of David, that, that came from the loins of David. We're going to be able to see a man that, that had these marks that died and gave his life that came in the flesh Jesus, the Son of God, and, and died for our sins, we're going to be able to see that. He's the one that's, uh, he's uh, uh, the one that's, uh, the one that's uh, sitting at the right hand, thank you, Holy Ghost, that's sitting at the right hand of the Father, that forever liveth, making intercessions for us. That one one mediator, and there's one God, and there's one man. That that's between God and man, between God and us. Who is that? The man, Jesus Christ, and the Son, in whom the Father has sent, that came in the flesh. He said, verse fifteen. 
which in his times, talking about Jesus, he shall show who is the blessed and the only uh, potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who only has immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see. Who no man has seen nor can see. Now, folks, we look at that, talking about uh, <clears throat> that God, that, that after it's all said and done, that that God, whom no man has seen nor can see, when it comes to the end, that <clears throat> and uh, this uh, this God that John said no man has seen at any time, this God that Jesus said, you've neither seen his shape nor heard his voice, that God there, folks, when, when we get there, that's going to be revealed to us. <clears throat> but, but he said, no man has ever seen that God there. Well, people that says, yeah, but God became flesh and dwelt among us. That God did. If that's the case, I said, if that is the way that that's supposed to mean that, should, should I say. Now, folks, like I said, you look at all these. Don't take my word for it. But if that is the case, that whenever John wrote that in St. John, that God became flesh and dwelt among us, well, then these scriptures here about Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, these scriptures about no man that has seen God in the flesh, well, these can't be. Because if it was God that was became flesh and dwelt among us, then John would have had to say, we've seen God. We handled God. We walked with God. We ate with God. We traveled with God. We went on boat rides with God. He, he, he couldn't say, he couldn't write this stuff down like he did. Paul writing to Timothy, he couldn't have wrote, hey, no, who, the God in whom no man has seen nor can see, because they would have had to said, hey, if they believed like most people does today, then these scriptures could not be in here. There's no way. And, and that, in these scriptures, it says that it was God that came in the flesh, uh, then it wouldn't be a spirit of Antichrist. Like, like John was saying here. No, we got to believe that Jesus came in the flesh, not as God that came in the flesh, not as the God man, not as, uh, however people wants to say that. I, I don't know. Folks, I'll be honest. I don't know where this got all fair. But if we're going by the Bible, now we know, listen, let me say this. These fellow that tells me uh, a lot of times that, Tim, the Bible says in, in the book of Isaiah, I think it was, that, uh, that a child is going to be, uh, born unto us and, and his name shall be Emmanuel. And, and that is to be interpreted God with us. God with us. Okay. That, that's true. That's what the Bible says. And one time, one time in the New Testament, it did say that they should call his name Emmanuel. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever called Jesus Emmanuel? Have you ever told anybody, hey, you need Emmanuel in your life. Emmanuel hung on the cross for your, uh, uh, sins. Emmanuel said is, have you ever said that, or have you ever heard anybody else use that? Christmas time. Uh, Christmas is all about Emmanuel. It, it's, it's all about the baby Emmanuel. That was it. Have you ever heard anybody say that? I'm going to go out on the limb and say, no, you ain't. And neither have I. I've never said it. I've never heard anybody else say it. But he said, that means God with us. Well, yeah, Jesus or God was with Jesus. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, who went about doing good healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. God was with Jesus. There ain't no doubt about it. You can't get away from that. Jesus said, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. God was with him. So yeah, that would be a true saying. But that does not mean that God left heaven and come down here and put on an earthly suit. No, God sent his son, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that was in the bosom of the Father. Now you get somebody that can explain that to you. I sure would like to hear it. 
because it's one of them things. I don't believe nobody can ever explain that. But we have to believe it. And I, I can sense some people getting a little excited about this. But folks, again, did you believe Jesus died for your sins? The son of God? Do you believe that God sent his son? To, to shed his blood for your sins? Do you believe that Jesus was the first resurrected uh, uh, man on this earth? Do you believe that Jesus ascended unto heaven, the son of the living God? <clears throat> Let me say this right here. There's a fellow told me one time, he said, Tim, you're trying to make Jesus an average everyday man. He said, I've got a problem with that. Well, let me say this right here. I'll clear this up real, real quick. Like. Jesus came from heaven. He was in the bosom of the Father. I don't even know how to explain that to anybody. <laughs> Jesus was born of a virgin that never knew a man, that never had intercourse with a man. And we know how that works, folks. <laughs> I, I believe people listening knows how a baby is brought into this world. He was born of a virgin. He received the spirit without measure. He uh, lived a perfect, sinless life. He perfectly obeyed the father. He heard from his father. He never sinned. He died on the cross. He was resurrected from the dead. They s stood and watched him ascend back to heaven. Folks, that's anything but an average, everyday Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just is. But was that Jesus, the son of God? Or was that God in the flesh? Now, folks, we've got to make up our mind one way or the other. And the reason, people says, what does this matter? Well, it matters a whole lot. For one reason, we need to know who Jesus was. And we need to know who we're telling people Jesus was. And we don't need to get them confused uh, 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 back and forth. And not only that, but if we're ever, I said, if we're ever going to have a witness that Jesus had, that his disciples had, if we're ever going to be able to give this gospel in the demonstration of the spirit, which we so desperately need, we've got to get these things settled. They, they ain't no other way around. You remember us saying here back some time ago, as long as people did what uh, the children of Israel in the Old Testament, the way God had laid it out and what he told them to do, the outcome was great. They got the results that God said that they could have. That was it. That's pretty simple. Well, if we get this in the New Testament, we get this gospel and we get these things laid out the way God set it up and the way that uh, Jesus brought it to us and the way it worked for Jesus. Guess what, folks? It can be working for us today just like it worked for Jesus, just like it worked for them 12 that turned the world upside down. And folks, people's reaching for everything. I don't know if you're listening to other people, but I listen to a bunch of people. I talk to a bunch of people. I listen to a lot of preaching. They're grasping for anything and everything in order to try to get this to work and this to work and this to work. And, this. and folks, if we just get back <coughs> to what Jesus said and what Jesus taught and, and get back to uh, the report that God gave of his son, <laughs> what was the port, the report that God gave of his son? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Did you notice God didn't say, <coughs> and he missed the best opportunity in the world. Whenever they heard the voice from heaven, now folks get this. They heard God speak in an audible voice. And what did God say? Fellas, this is me in the flesh. You better do what I say. You better keep my commandments. He didn't say that. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Who? Jesus. What Jesus said. Well, what did Jesus go about telling people? Did Jesus go about telling people, hey, I am God in the flesh. I, I was God in heaven and I came down and, and now I'm dwelling amongst you and now I'm manifested in the flesh. He didn't say nothing like that. It never even went that direction with anything. 
Glory to God. Help me, Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us. Why? Because of the spirit that he has given us of his son. What spirit is that? The spirit of truth. <clears throat> and we have seen and we do testify. Now listen to what John said. We seen and we testify. What did you see, John? And what are you testifying? That the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Did he say that the Father became the Son? That the Son was the God-man? That, 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 that God put on flesh? And dwell? Did he say it? No. That He said, we're testifying. Do you believe these boys' testimony? Do you believe that they had it right? Do you believe that, that, that they know what they was talking about? That God sent his son. Well, you believe that too? Ain't no sense you getting upset about it. You believe that, that there ain't no other name that you can be born in, that salvation can come. You can't get to the Father any other way except how? Through his son. So, you know, like we said, we don't need to be getting excited about this and getting upset about it. Really, we should be saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for helping me. Thank you for helping me see this right here, that, that I'm not going to be uh, uh, seduced and deceived and led astray. And not only that, but I'm not going to lead, uh, lead other people astray. And, and that we're all going to be in the ditch on this right here. And we all going to be blind leaders of the blind. And, and we can't walk together because we ain't agreeing. Do we agree with this word right here? Like we were saying earlier, hey, yeah, I have to agree that, that Emmanuel, that, that, that God is with him or God is with us. You know, folks, we can take that and go all the way back to Moses. What are you trying to say, Brother Tim? Was God with Moses whenever that he led, uh, the children of Israel? Moses said, I, I won't go unless you go with me. God said, I've come down. <laughs> Listen to this. God said, <laughs> I've come down. He said, I've seen the afflictions of my people and I have come down to deliver. God said, I've come down to do this. He said, now, come on, Moses. I'm going to send you. Did God do it? No, he used a man in order to do it. Just like Emmanuel. Did God come down? Uh, well, I mean, he said he did in, in the Old Testament. He said, I've come down to deliver them. Well, he did come down so to speak. How did he do that in Jesus' life? Well, really, it was through the Holy Ghost. That's how God did the things. He. That's how God got his will done on earth as in heaven. That's how God destroyed, got his works done over the works of the devil. How? That he anointed Jesus, his son, and whom the Father sent in order to go about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God dwelt with Jesus. God was in him. How? By the Holy Ghost. Folks, let me tell you this right here. Before I go any further, <clears throat> we, the only way the Holy Ghost brought this to my attention here the other day, the only way people is ever going to get this, I, I'm sorry, this is it. This is the only way they're ever going to get this. St. John chapter 14, Jesus talking about the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but he said, you know him for he dwells with you. He said this spirit of truth, who's the spirit of truth? The Holy Ghost. Jesus said, this was before Jesus ascended to heaven and sent the Holy Ghost back. He said, this Holy Ghost, he dwells with you. How was the Holy Ghost dwelling with them people whenever Jesus hadn't sent them back and they hadn't been filled with the Holy Ghost? He dwelt with them because he was in Jesus. <coughs> Jesus received the Holy Ghost whenever he was baptized in the Jordan River. Remember the Holy Ghost descended upon him? Well, the Holy Ghost was dwelling. He was abiding with them or he was with them. Should We, we can say it like that. He was with them. How? through the Holy Ghost that dwelt with Jesus, just like Emmanuel. God with us. Was God with Jesus? Yes, he was. How? Through the Holy Ghost that come upon Jesus. He said, for I am 
in my Father, and the Father is in me. He didn't say, I am the Father, and the Father is me. He didn't say that. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will. He said, I will come to you. How's he coming? Jesus coming back and dwelling with us? No, he's not. Not till he comes back and gets the church. But he did send that comforter, the spirit of truth, which is one just like him. Just like him. Just like Jesus was the image of of the Father. Jesus was the image of God. The Holy Ghost is the image of Jesus. He said, verse 20, let me get to this. At that day, what day? When the Comforter, this Spirit of Truth, this Holy Ghost has come, at that day, you shall know. Now he said, you're going to know something other here, folks. You're going to know. What are we going to know? That I am in my Father and you in me. And I knew another place he said that I am in my father and the father is in me. And right here he said at that day, what day? When the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth is come. And folks, that's what it's going to take to get people to get this understanding is this spirit of truth that teaches nothing but the truth. Nothing besides what Jesus said. That's what the Holy Ghost does. And Jesus said, if you remember, if you continue in my words, then you're going to know the truth. Why is that? Because this spirit of truth that I'm going to send, he ain't going to teach you nothing else besides what that I said. And this is what Jesus said. You know, folks, he said this right here. He said in Matthew, I know I'm going a little fast, but that's okay. Chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Now, Jesus was directing his prayers towards his Father, which was where? In heaven. And he said that you're Lord of heaven and earth. When Jesus was down here on this earth, the only begotten Son, on this earth, was he Lord of heaven? No, he was Lord down here on this earth. He was king of kings and Lord down here. His heavenly father was Jehovah God and Lord of heaven and earth at that time. He said, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my father. And no man, get this, no man knows the son but the Father. He said, there ain't nobody knows the Son but the Father, the only begotten Son that was in the bosom of the Father. He said, he's the only one that knows the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father except the Son, and whom the Father has sent. He said, and he to whosoever the Son will reveal him to. Now, does everybody know who the Father is and who the Son is. According to this scripture right here, no, they do not. (coughs) It's just whosoever that the Father will reveal the Son to and whosoever the Son will reveal the Father to. Let me say this right here. Everybody, God does not reveal himself to everybody according to the Bible. He don't reveal himself. But, Everybody he does reveal himself to, he will always reveal himself the same. He will never reveal himself to one person this way, another person that way, another person that way, and another person that way. Won't do it. It's impossible. He can't do that. That Why? Because he would be deceiving. He would be misleading. And really, he would be lying to somebody because... uh That's not how God is, and it's impossible for God to lie. Everybody that he reveals himself to, he's going to reveal himself the same way. It will always add up to what Jesus said. Who did Jesus say he was? He was in the Father, and the Father was in him. I've got just a few minutes. Let me get this right here real quick. I need to get this in right here. 
where you can go back and look at this right here. I'm going to jump fast forward just a little bit. Next week, we'll catch the rest of this. But chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. This is he that came by water and blood. Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. Who come by water and blood? Jesus Christ. He came in the flesh. Uh, he dwelt on this earth in flesh and bone and blood, just like we did. He came by water and blood. And it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is true. That's what we've been saying here for the last 30 minutes. This Holy Ghost is going to teach truth. He said, this spirit of truth, it bears witness that Jesus came in the flesh. He dwelt on this earth, the son of God, and he came by water and blood. For there are three that bear record in heaven, in heaven. Now, folks, are we in, this is why I don't touch the stuff in heaven and the scriptures that concern Jesus about him being in heaven, whether that was before he came or after he ascended. Why is that? Because I don't know nothing about it. He said, there are three that bear witness in heaven or bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These are three, and these three are one. Are, okay, that, that's great. People, they've said that for years. They're all one, okay? But where at? In heaven. This is the way it is in heaven. Now he's given another example. And there are three that bear witness in earth. Now, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but this earth is nothing like heaven. This is, heaven was one way, earth is another. The spirit, that's capitalized, that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, the water, and the blood. And these three on earth are one. No, he don't say that. He says, they agree. In heaven, it's one way. On earth, they agree. How can two walk together except they agree? The water, the blood, and the spirit. Jesus, uh, whenever he received the spirit of truth, he said, hey, I can only teach you truth. I can only teach you what my father has taught me. When my father tells me something, he says, amen, so be it. I agree, Father, whatever you say, because you're in me and I'm in you and whatever you say, that's the way it is. And that's what he says. And the same thing is, do you agree with what Jesus said? Do you agree what the Holy Ghost said? Because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. And when the Holy Ghost says that these three on earth, that they agree, then folks, what have we got to do? We've got to agree with what they agree with with what Jesus and what the Holy Ghost agrees with. And folks, like we said, one of them is in heaven, the other is in earth. That's two different places. He said, if we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. In other words, if somebody else is trying to tell you something other than that, hey, this witness of God is greater than what man has to say. He said, "He, uh, for this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. What witness, what is that? He that believeth on the son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God, in other words, if you don't believe what God said, if you don't agree with what God said, he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. In other words, you have made him a liar, is what God said. What was the record that God gave? This is my son, my beloved son, my own, the only begotten son in whom I have sent into the world. Was that the record that God gave of his son? When they heard him speak, behold, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Did God give the record? This is the God son, the God man. This is me on this earth. Did he say that? If he didn't say that, if that's not the record he did, why do people say that? Why do we tell people that, especially after we've tried to convince them, hey, it's the Son of God of only the way that you can get born again. It was the Son of God whom the Father sent that died for your sins. Why do we 
go that way with it and then turn around and twist it to mean something and other else. Folks, I pray that we're getting some light on this right here. I tell you, the Holy Ghost just helps me every time we go over this. You know, folks, like we said, we need to get this understanding. It's just like Jesus said, who does man say that I am? And you know, folks, that's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself. Who do you say Jesus was? Did you say Jesus came in the flesh and walked on this earth? And if we say that, then we can't turn it around and, and twist it and then say something or another else. Why is that? Because it cannot work that way. We're out of time this week. We'll pick up here next week. And uh, may God bless.